Well, Toronto police released a pointed message today. Follow the law or be arrested. The warning comes ahead of pro-Palestinian demonstrations planned throughout the weekend. If they're going to break the law, if they're going to assault our police officers or assault our police horses, there will be uh, consequences and people will be arrested. Toronto police say it spent $12 million over, uh, on over 500 protests, that is, since October 7th. Now, that figure includes officer salaries and overtime. And that lately, a few people who frequent pro-Palestinian demonstrations are agitating officers and turning violent. Demonstrators say they're the ones facing violence. Now, last Saturday, police arrested and charged several people after they allegedly assaulted officers and horses. The Toronto Police Association released this statement today. We'll show you part of that statement now. When those in attendance have broken the law, our members have been patient and professional. All was opting to de-escalate and provide warnings that every opportunity, often to the point of criticism and ridicule from others. Well, Toronto Police Association uh, is also criticizing Mayor Olivia Chow for her response. For more on all of this, we are joined now by John Reed. He is the president of the Toronto Police Association, and we reach him today in Toronto. Uh, appreciate you being here, Mr. Reed. I know that you're on the road and you took the time to chat with us. So let's talk about, uh, you know, more of what your officers are facing. Paint a picture for me of what these protests have been like to manage. So, Travis, you have to understand, these have been going on now for over six months. Um, and, and it's an ongoing issue every weekend. And we have our members that are being called out all the time to assist, uh, to ensure the people, when they come to these protests, they're able to do them safely and lawfully. The problem we've been running into here more recently is that's not happening anymore. And the officers are out there. They're being very patient with people. They're giving them direction, asking people to move. And unfortunately, people are no longer uh, taking direction. And when we end up with officers, as you mentioned in your uh, opening statement there, officers are being assaulted. We've had officers which have had horse feces thrown at them, uh, officers where they've been attempted to be speared with a flagpole, and also individuals when uh, they are in the process of arresting people, they're trying to stop the arrest. And that is a criminal offense as well. And, you know, we're here in Toronto and we're not hearing anything from our politicians. And even worse, today, we ended up with six councillors from the City of Toronto, two of which were on our police services board, putting out uh, a note which essentially um, supported the protesters and said nothing about the police officers. There was zero support for the police officers, zero concern for the police officers. And these two individuals on the police services board, I'm just wondering whether they should be there or not. And I think the mayor needs to do something about it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about that. You said in a statement that the TPA put out, our members deserve support from the mayor and council. What would you like to see uh, Toronto Mayor Olivia Chow do? Well, I think the reality is come out and support the police officers. They are doing the job they need. Also reinforce with the people who are involved in the protests. The, the police will support them if they protest lawfully, and peacefully. That's the whole idea. Those are constitutional rights. And our officers are there to ensure that, that right is, uh, those rights are protected. But they're not unlimited. You know, at a certain point, if people start committing criminal acts or threatening people, then that is crossing the line. And that's where people end up getting arrested. Okay, so uh, are you concerned at all here that, you know, by putting out this statement, uh, that, that that could actually... Uh, be detrimental to your officers at the next protest that they are trying to, to manage to, because tensions now are even more inflamed between police and protesters? Uh, I tell you right now, tensions were already inflamed after last weekend. And it's not helping with the politicians being silent as far as supporting the police officers. These members are out there each and every day away from their families because these are not regular protests. These are things which have been popping up for the last six months where our officers are actually pulled away from other jobs, other jobs in policing which need to be done, which aren't getting done as a result of having to police these protests. Okay, dig into that a little bit more for me. If, you know, if, you're, if your officers are managing these protests, you know, we've seen them uh, across the country. It's not just Toronto dealing with this, we should say as well, because we're a national program here. There are other jurisdictions right across the country dealing with several protests. But what are your officers being taken away from? What other uh, activities would they be doing at, at that point? And, and policing would they be doing that they cannot do because they're having to deal with protests? Uh, it could be a litany of things. 
Uh, so we have specialized officers that are called out from the public safety unit. Um, they'll come out, but they're pulled away from the regular duties. And those officers from span across the entire service. It could be frontline primary response. It could be out of detective services. But once again, these are functions which are no longer being performed because our officers are drawn down to these protests. And I really want to actually mention that the reality of these protests in Toronto, our officers have been doing these protests for years, doing thousands of protests. And it's the same officers, it's the same rules of engagements for, uh, for our members. And then you ask, what has changed? Well, nothing's changed on the police side. Right? This is changing on the protester side. And these are decisions which they're making. These protesters are out. They're not communicating with the officers when they're trying to find out what route they need to take or they want to take. In fact, in certain situations, they're actually giving them false information about what route. And that is not helpful. It is not good for public safety. And John, what is your response to, you know, several protesters? There are, uh, you know, several s folks that have come out publicly and said uh, that the police are being aggressive here, that the police are the ones being violent. What would you say to that criticism? I would disagree wholeheartedly. Our members are professional. They have body cameras on them for the entire process. Our members do. So everything they do, everything they say is captured on uh, video and audio. They're true professionals. And I will say also to the protesters, everything that they're saying to the officers is also being captured. You know, and I think it's really important to understand, once again, that the members, they're doing their job. They're fulfilling their duties, which is trying to ensure these things are conducted safely. But when we have crowds of people blocking streets, blocking sidewalks, where the regular residents can't get around, emergency vehicles can't get around, uh, public transit can't get around with people in the streets. This is a problem. Okay, John, got to leave it there for uh, today, uh, but certainly appreciate you taking the time. That is John Reed, who is the president of the Toronto Police Association, joining us from Toronto this evening.